Hi, I'm Desper Robinson. You are watching B83, and I'm here with another episode of Meet the Artist. Um, and in this episode, I have my good friend, Funny Tommy. Thank you for having me. All right, thanks for coming in. Um, just a little bit of an introduction. If you don't know Funny Tommy, he is probably one of the most renowned contemporary artists that we have right now in the UK, as well with people like Rihanna, um, Tiny Temper, mm -hmm. Jesse J. Ed Sheeran, mm -hmm. yeah, many, many different people. And I think in 50 to 100 years, he's going to be one of the people that people look at as the one of the Picassos and Michelangelo's of our time. Hopefully. Um, hopefully. <laughs> so, hated to gas it off too much, mm -hmm. but yeah, I really respect your work, and I know a lot of people do. You know, you sell um, art pieces all around the world, and I know you have mm -hmm. a great audience that kind of really look at the stuff that you do as, you know, real, really great art. Um, how did you how did you get started? Um, I want to know your story, the backstory, how you got going from the very beginning. From the beginning, like, I'm right. interested in in how you got to the place that you are now. You are now, yeah. Yeah, so I started when I was a kid, um, about three years old. Um, parents used to always take me to art galleries. Uh, from then, kind of realised I was a little bit better than the other kids in my class. Just, just, just a little, little bit, just a, little bit, just a yeah. tiny little yeah. bit. But I was rubbish at other things like maths and that, so it balanced it out, like the yin and the yang. Yeah. Um, Realised a little bit better, kept on doing art, boom, boom, boom. Uh, there's one time I ate peanuts, which I'm allergic to, <laughs> and it made me swell up. So I was in hospital for like six months. So six months? Yeah, six months, because I was swat. The peanuts were crazy, never eat peanuts again. <laughs> So in that six months, all I had time to do is draw, 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 okay. draw, draw. How old were you then? Uh, year seven, so okay, like cool. year seven times. Um, after that, got out. I was a little bit better at drawing, but then I stopped back to school. Uh, got a job, kept on drawing. Mm. While I was working, there's like, no, nah, you can't do this. Can't, mm. can't, we can't pay you to draw. You're supposed to be doing your job. Got sacked. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, let me just take it serious. And then I started with the mixtape covers, SAS, Hayes, um, Biggs, all got in contact with me from early yeah. MySpace. Um, got me to do mixtape covers. And then from that, I implemented my art into the covers and then it progressed on to what it is now. Okay, so who was the first mixtape cover that you did? Like um, Eurogang, volume two. That was the first cover that you did, Eurogang Ever. volume two? Yeah. And the, the relationship just you know went from there. from there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that I I met you through. SAS. I know we had mutual people that already knew each other from yeah. the area, but I met you through SAS mm -hmm. and, and, and the Eurogang relationship. Exactly. Like how did how did you end up getting in contact with with them? How did that come about? Uh, Hayes from Eurogang saw my work on MySpace way way back in the day. He hit me. He was like, "Hey, I rap with these other guys." SAS Biggs, blah, blah, blah. I was like, hey, I already know who they are. Yeah. I was like, that's mad. Um, so he brought me into that type of mix and then I started working with them from there. Mm -hmm. And then um, just kept on going. As you know, did more covers for them, went abroad with them and it just turned from a look, from professional to friendship. So I've always worked with them ever yeah, since then. Yeah. So they were the kind of the first people that you did the mixtape covers the for. The first. And it kind of branched yeah. out from there. Exactly. Are there any things, any pieces that you've done? Cause I know there's a, I think that you did, did you do, there's a, is it Cameron you've done like? Did a Cameron one. Yeah. Uh, not everyone knows this, but also like own the rights to uh, UN. <laughs> because <laughs> this, is, this is what I'll get into. <laughs> because he uh, he got someone to get me to do the logo. Yeah. Um, the logo has always been under my name yeah, and branding, yeah. so I've always owned that logo. So you own the rights to Cameron's. You went the logo in your name. Yeah. Do with Vado and all exactly. that kind of stuff there. Yeah. Because I think you told me that you made that logo at one point. Exactly. And I was just like, when did you? How did you even? How do you even get to that? Yeah, but um, so that branding, that piece that's there, that's that's currently my, yours. But I'm not like I'm not like what's yeah. his name? I'm not like Diddy. I'm not just gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like extort them for that. If they wanted it back, I'd give them back for free. But yeah. Yeah. So as a list of people, I mean, we've just recently, you know, we've mentioned, I've mentioned like Tiny Temper, Ed mm -hmm. and you've done portraits for, you've done, um, you know, you, you just mentioned you did stuff for Cam, like, mm. who have you, you know, who have you worked no, with? Who have I worked with? Yeah, uh, who have you worked with? Or don't work for? Who, yeah, who's, who's commissioned you? Um, don't work for Jesse J, Ed Sheeran, um, Rihanna, just done a Chris Brown project, mm -hmm. um, Wretch, his new mixtape. 
Who else have I done? G Fresh, Tiny Temper. Uh, damn, this list is long. So long, I forget. Uh, man, I can't even remember everyone, but yeah. there's been a lot of people. How did the How did the Rihanna Night project come come about? Come about. Was it that you did like a, a portrait for her? Is that the only thing that you've done? You know, it is. It wasn't even that I did a portrait for her. I'd rather, at that time, draw or paint celebrities. Mm. So I don't have people coming, oh, you drew my face, I want money from you. So I always thought if I do a celebrity, they're probably not going to see it. Mm. And I'm probably, people ain't going to start trying to get money from me. So I did a Rihanna one, just put it out there. And I don't think I tagged anyone because I don't really do portraits to get attention from the person. I just do it for the art itself. Yeah. Somehow I found a way into her eyesight, and then she hollered and said she likes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you end up like selling that piece to her or like? Yeah, I went and took it to her, and that was it. Really, I took it to her. She's always been cool. As you know, when we go to LA, she's like, "Yo, you in LA? You need anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah." So probably the coolest person. Celebrity wise, I've ever done anything for. Yeah, it was like, is Rihanna? Yeah. Is there, I mean, how would you, um, how would you describe your art style and kind of the things that inspire you to kind of create the art that you do? Because you do some very varied things. It's like, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a style I'm that you, you can, you can, I can look at a funny Tommy piece mm -hmm. and be like, yeah, you know, that's that's funny Tommy. It's like hearing a Neptune's beat. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can, that's funny Tommy. But there's, there's some other stuff that I look at, like, oh, you know, I didn't know that was that. you. Like, how, what what inspires you to kind of create. create the things that you do? Just driving. Drive. All I do is I drive and then just put music on. And I feel like when you're driving, that's when your mind is the most clear. And that's when you probably... All you got to do is look at the road and yeah. collect your thoughts. I, I drive alone. I'm hardly ever with anyone. So I just drive in, get my thoughts together. And then once I'm thinking about things, like sometimes I'll, I'll be driving and I think, wow, like, there's kids in Africa, shooting off AKs. That's <laughs> mad. And then I think... <laughs> these, uh, these are the kind of things that you think about. Exactly like, what, while I'm yeah, driving. So yeah. I think, I think, why are there kids in Africa shooting off AKs? Why, like... Yeah. And we've got kids here, like, crying because, like, they didn't get a PS4 for Christmas. And I, I, things like that, I think. And I think, how can I put it into the artwork mm. instead of just tweeting shit about it. I'd rather just put it into artwork so that's how I'll get like my inspiration for things. Or um, what else have I done? Everything, every concept I ever had has come from me driving. Every concept? Every concept. If I didn't drive, I would have no concepts. <laughs> I, swear. I only started getting <laughs> concepts. I passed my test at like 17. Yeah. I had no concepts before 17. <laughs> yeah. I was just drawing what I saw. I'd see like Ryu, I'd draw Ryu, but there's no concepts. Like as soon as I started driving, yeah. all the concepts came about. So do you think there's like a, um, you know, is it your attempt to, not attempt, but your mm -hmm. your take on, you know, so, so society, like social messages? Are you, yeah. are you trying to get a message out there through, uh, through your artwork or are you just kind of, you know? A little bit, but I'm not really a deep person like that. Like I'm not like, I will say, hey, something's wrong and it needs to be fixed. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm probably not even smart enough neither. I'm not smart enough to know the answer to it. All I'm smart enough to do is say, here's a problem. If you guys are smarter than me now to fix it, then let's try and do that. Yeah. That's what I do in my art, I put it out. If anyone's got any suggestions for the answer, then let me know. But I'm not smart enough to figure out any of these problems. Have you, have you got a favorite piece? Uh, my favourite piece is probably the war one. Have you seen? Speaking of war kids, it's like the kid with a super soaker, and it's like in a very abstracty kind of. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm gonna, probably my I'll get a picture and put this on mm. the people that don't, that you know, can't see what we're talking about. That's probably my favourite at the moment. But that's one of the most recent pieces, isn't it? Like, yeah. You know, like the end of last, last year. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End of last year. I mean, have you, do you sell? I mean, do you sell prints? Do you do you sell the original pieces? Like, how do you? Because what I want to know, and for other people out there mm. particularly, is um, how do you sustain yourself from the work that you do, from your artwork? Do you, you know, is it is it a business to you as as it is just kind of a creative outlet as well? Uh, yeah, it's literally my life. That's all I do. Mm. So I wake up every morning. I wake up. I think. I think obviously get dressed in that hygiene, but other than that, I think uh, what am I going to paint today? Yeah. 
And then once I'm thinking that, I'll go in the car, I'll do things I don't need to do, like go Tesco to buy avocado, but I'll make sure the Tesco is like three, four miles away, gather my thoughts, come back mm. and get something done. So I'm always, I literally live artwork. I'm not like one of them people where I oh, know, oh, blah, blah, drew this in 1742. Yeah. I'm not like a art historian, but yeah. my yeah. life is literally art all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So do you kind of, you kind of, you make art like the way somebody like SX, for instance, would get up and make a beat? Exactly. In that, in that kind of way, Exa like the way a producer yeah, yeah. would make a beat. Do you ever get kind of um, like creative burnout or where you can't think of anything or where you feel like, do you ever feel like you're doing it for the money or do you, do you ever get Never. to the point where you kind of look at your art and think, oh, what am I, you know, what am I doing? Or I don't know what to do at the moment. Never, because I always think there's too much, too much things to draw from. Mm. So like... I play a lot of video games. There's so much art in video games that I don't know how I can play so many video games and not be um, motivated to create something. Because yeah. to me, everything's art around us. Like even the setup here, the way everything's set up, it's not, those three pillars ain't there by chance. They're there because it looks good. So to me, everything is art. So I never run out. Yeah. I don't run out of art, no way. Have you done, I mean, I think I've seen you do, have you done any ex exhibitions? I mean, how yeah. have you, you know, have you been commissioned to do any big work or what What have you, what have you done? That's big guys, uh, did Tate Modern. Yeah. That's pretty big. How did that, how did that go? How did, how did that come about? Like, that's a Tate, that's a big. Yeah, it's a little bit big. It's a big art, yeah, yeah. like, you know, this is well-renowned, well-renowned, like, art exactly. place, the, the Tate. Um, what happened is, what did happen? Angel, the singer, not the biblical figure, Angel, uh, he had like a show going on there and yeah. I'd already done Angel's album cover. So Angel hit my management at the time and he was like, hey, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do like, we're gonna mix art with the music. So while I'm performing, the, we're gonna be putting up artwork, projected something stupid, like 100 feet okay. in the background, let's make this happen. So that's how that happened. A month after, I did Royal Albert Hall for six weeks, which is pretty long, solo exhibition. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone else has done that. Wait, let's let's backtrack a second. Mm -hmm. So, the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I remember from that, you were the first, were you the first black person to ever ex 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 exhibit in the Royal Albert Hall? I think so, but I mean, I could be wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I, haven't, like, I haven't Googled it or anything, yeah. but when I've asked around, they've said, yeah. But how does you know these are these are cutting edge fine even things like how do you mm. how do you take those things in that you're able to it's a very prestigious building yeah, it is. here in the uk mm. the Great Albert Hall. you know jay-z was what i think one of the first either the first yeah. rapper to do a show there and, you were and that was first. a big thing as well that was a massive thing mm. as well and and you're the first person to or first black person to exhibit art there does that does that make you feel good how do you feel about things like that uh yeah i do feel good but i feel good because not so much that it's me i feel good that other people know they can do that. Yeah. Do you get know I me? Mean? So yeah. I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I was like, nah, you can't do that. Mm. Da, 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 da. But you can't really tell a kid they can't do something if it's already been done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I'm glad about it. I'm not really glad about me doing it. When I do it, it's just like, okay, I'm doing it, but I know it's better for the people after me to be able to do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So everyone needs, like we were saying before, everyone needs that first person to lay the brick it's true. for everyone else. Yeah, it's true. Have you, I mean, other than the Tate and the, the um, Royal Albert Hall, yeah. have you had any other yeah, ex did exhibitions? Roundhouse with Beats by Dre. Okay, yeah. Another solo exhibition. Was that the thing that the, the visuals were by you and the audio was by SX? SX. Yeah, yeah. That's a great, yeah. that's a great collaboration. Exactly, and because I'm a fan of SX, it made sense. Yeah. And then, obviously, Beats by Dre are who they are. Hmm. So, that was it. And Roundhouse. Pretty decent place. Yeah, that's a so, big. Is that where the iTunes festivals? Exactly. Time. Big long queues. Yeah. Hours long. Yeah. Going from like Camden Roundhouse all the way up to Sainsbury. So, yeah. Did you have a lot of people come to come to see your, your your stuff like the surprisingly Royal Albert, the, yeah Roundhouse? I was like, I'm thinking every time I'm working, I'm thinking it's just me. Like, mm. I'm, who am I? I'd, you probably know my art, but I'm not really anyone interesting. Yeah. And then when I went to. Uh, Royal Albert Hall, enough people. Yeah. I was thinking, what? Like, I don't understand. So I, was, I appreciate everyone that came through. I mean, you seem to have, you've had a, an impact, you know, mm. on, on people. 
um, you know, you've got a big social media following on Instagram and Twitter. Mm. Uh, like, do, do you do you do you take it as a responsibility? You mentioned like you know inspiring people and kind of you know taking down the walls so other people can think about they can do it as well. Mm. Is that something that 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 dawns on you often that you know what you are doing is inspiring people and do you want to continue to do that too, to to do so? You know what? I used to think I don't inspire anyone. I used to think, mm. like I said, why would anyone take inspiration from me? Because I'm not smarter than you. I'm not smarter than the cameraman. I'm not smarter than anyone. Do you know what I mean? But then I, I kept on getting emails like, oh, I'm doing my GCSE coursework and the subjects you, or oh, I'm doing my A levels and the subjects you. And it. I thought, damn, like that's a lot of people emailing me saying I'm doing work based on your work mm. to get my grades to do what I need to do. So yeah. from that. I thought, okay, I don't get why I do, but apparently I do. Yeah, that's, nice. that's cool, people. that's cool. I mean, you've, music seems to be like a running theme mm. through your, for you know, you do mixtape covers. Yeah. You do that collaboration with um, Beats by Dre. or so, oh, yeah. and, you know, Beats by Dre. Mm -hmm. You know, you've done a lot of, you know, portraits and stuff for music artists. Mm -hmm. Is that, isn't it, is that something that's, a, you know, you say you drive to music, you listen to things. Um, have you ever made music yourself? Yeah, for uh, SAS Galaxy Fly. What, what, did what did you do on, on, produced on that project there? The last track and with Agenda Produce Shout, which is one of my favourite SAS tracks. Also, okay, because you did, that's the one I did the video Yeah, for, yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. See how things were. <laughs> so yeah. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get to is that mm. like you are obviously you know, a multi-talented mm. you know, artist, creative Thank person you. that does different things. Have you considered doing more Production, so from what I remember, those mm -hmm. two beats were were pretty. They're good. pretty decent. I did uh, pretty good beats. I did a, a mixtape with Haze as well. It was like about I don't know if we released the whole thing. it. Is it about no? It, I was gonna release it myself. Yeah. But he scattered the tracks throughout his mixtape. If that makes okay, sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About seven songs. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to continue with it because I didn't believe I could be the best at it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to do anything where. I'm not going to be the best eight car. I'll listen to SX. I will listen to uh, Dreddy. I'll listen to Swift. And I think, damn, these lot make me never want to open Fruit Loops again. I never want to touch a <laughs> PC. I never want to do a drum pattern because I can't be the best at it. Yeah. So I'm, I said, I'm out. I'm, I'm good. And is, is that that's how you feel about the artwork that you that you do? That like you know for what you do, you're the I feel I have the potential to be the best at it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I feel like there'll be a point in my life where I'll be a lot of people's favorite, but I know I'll never do that with like music or anything like that. So yeah. I said, nah, dead that. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you to comp commission a piece of, of my daughter when she was about oh yeah a mm. year, year and a half. Year, you know, and that's because mm. I do see your artwork as something that like you know, like I said at the start, like 50, 100 years. Mm -hmm. I want to say that you know, she plan. can look back at like funny Tommy. Did a pain of me when I was a, when I was a child, so that's mm. you know, a really really important thing. I mean, have you where where have you sold art to? Like how far you know across the globe I is, think, is your artwork? I think the only place it isn't is probably North and South Pole. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're the only two continents yeah. never touched down in uh, Europe, Asia, Australia, America. What else have we got? What other continents do we have left? Don't do this to me. Like, <laughs> I've sold in. I've done. I think Australia, I've done. Asia, you got. I've done all the continents. America, have you got? Have you got stuff in South America? Yeah. Brazil, Mexico, all those yeah. places. Well, they say Mexico, Central America, but yeah, yeah, Mexico. Yeah. yeah. I got people eating patties, eating, <laughs> looking at my artwork. Got people eating tacos, sushi all around the world. There's different people I mean do, do people send you pictures of where they are where's the, where's the strangest place that you've seen a strangers a piece of your artwork positioned across the world uh, maybe not the strangest but the most surprising probably Tokyo Tokyo yeah the most surprising have part. you been there yet because that's a very graphic place you say you, you play need like video games and stuff I think I'm going to go there this year mm. yeah in fact I will do yeah so that's the next place I'm going to be going and Australia is where I want to go I mean, driving inspires you. Does mm -hmm. does traveling inspire you too? I mean, we've been to LA together and Italy. Oh, you know, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we've been to Italy together as mm. well. Do, do 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 like the seeing the world kind of yes. spark you to create stuff as well as just driving around. Like. Exactly. Like even 
even if it isn't even seeing the world it's situations that will happen so like i don't know like if we was in italy or something and we got kicked out of a car in the middle of the night <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for things that, that are that, not our fault what wait are you, are you, are you, are you that, that one wasn't our fault actually that wasn't yeah, our yeah, fault yeah, 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 so yeah, things yeah. like that yeah. will spark something in my head hold on how can i create something out of this yeah do you know what i mean yeah so a lot okay so a situation like that the, the one that ended with the line I'm funny Tommy bitch nah I don't know what that line is I've never said that in my yeah. life <laughs> I've never said that so things like that will and have sparked uh, artwork yeah. out of my head so all si- I take in everything yeah, all we, situations for people that don't know and don't know why I'm laughing we mm-hmm. kind of we, we ended up in a kind of a, a bit of a racist um, situation in, mm-hmm. a, in Italy yeah. mm-hmm. in the back of a taxi you know, we couldn't speak the language and it started to get a bit serious. <laughs> Funny Tommy ended the conversation. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Not me. But this is this is this is what I knew, you know, Funny Tommy was a bit of a of a of a interesting one. very interesting character. And that was a that was a great that was a great journey. Yeah me. it was. Um, you've done going back to music again, you've done uh you've done a lot of covers for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I feel like you've done some of the some of the best mixtape artwork, album artwork mm-hmm. that's been done Thank you. in the UK. Really raised the kind of level of expectation for what you can kind of see mm-hmm. at those kind of projects, particularly on an urban level where people aren't so accustomed. Yeah, accustomed yeah. to seeing that kind of that kind of aesthetic on on mm-hmm. on, a, on, a, on an urban product. You've kind of you kind of upped the bar there. Yeah. How do you feel about where we are with the the UK music industry, um, the scene, the artists, and whatever like? How do you feel about the way things are going? You know what's crazy? The uh, the older I get, the less I know about what's happening in England. Mm. And I feel it's because in my 30s and that, most people making music now are like in their 20s. Mm. And m- probably the same as you. When we was in our 20s, we was listening to like Nas, Jay-Z, even when we was in our teens. Mm. So now as an older m- man, I don't really... Uh, I don't really understand what's going on, basically. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Do you know what I mean? You feel, oh, out, you feel out of touch. I feel out of touch. Half yeah. of the slang, I yeah. don't understand. Yeah. But uh, what is out there, a lot of stuff I still do like, though. Who's, who's give me a give me name. Who, like, who do you think is somebody that's really, really killing it at the moment? Uh, killing it or? Yeah. Well, that you enjoy as yourself. Yeah, enjoy, cause it lo- may not be the, yeah, the biggest yeah. artist or the least known artist, but who do you, who do you enjoy as funny, Tommy? Because a lot of music I listen to, and not really like popular music, mm. uh, obviously, like SAS, Biggs, Hayes, um, G Fresh, Tiny Temper, uh, Wretch, Blade, super underrated. Yeah. Yeah, really like Blade. Is um, he though? Do you think he's super underrated? Yeah, I think he's super underrated. I think if Blade was American and grew up in America, like he would be worldwide now, I reckon. Uh, okay, I get you. Because he's yeah. like our. Jeezy, exactly. Yeah. And he can actually rap, he's got lyrics, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. As you know, it's most of the people I listen to mm. are like my age group, do you know what I mean? And there's not a lot of people left that my age group making music that are really out there like that. Like SX, like I said, he's not a rapper or anything, but yeah. I think he's one of the best. Yeah. Um, like Jay Spades. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't really know what's going on in the industry. Mm-hmm. As, as far as what's going on, all I do is if a label contacts me to do a cover, I yeah. do a cover, but I don't really know the ins and the outs. I don't really understand it. Okay, but, okay. I mean, you say you've got, like, we, we were talking off camera earlier on, and you were talking mm-hmm. about this year, um, mm. you know, and what you're looking to do this year. I mean, have you got any plans, any things coming up that people can look forward to from Funny Tommy? Well, the plan is uh, to do the biggest exhibition probably ever done. So I want to just. Ever. Ever. Since Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanna uh just wanna go from the top from the bottom of England yeah. to like the top of Scotland, just doing exhibitions all within one month. And then after that wanna go over to New York, Brooklyn yeah. and do an exhibition over there and that's the plan. 
Are you, you gonna know. um? Have you are you gonna are you gonna document that? Because that's that sounds like if you're gonna do it, I'll. If you're gonna if you're gonna. Maybe I'm <laughs> trying to fish some work. Exactly. Here, <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, that would be. I didn't even think of that. That'd be a good thing to do. Yeah, like now, nah, because if you're doing if you're not you're planning on doing the biggest exhibition, that feels to me you're gonna be doing a lot of be road trips. Yeah. There'll be a lot of inspiration. Like mm -hmm. where do you where do you paint? Do you paint at home or do you paint on the go? Do you draw ideas? Like where do you um, when you get that idea? How do you how do you capture it? I know put it down. You know musicians will write lyrics or do whatever. Like what what do you do? I just put it in my head. Yeah. Yeah. I got like a photographic memory. My memory for words and everything terrible. Mm. Don't remember lyrics. Don't remember people's names, phone numbers. But visual, I remember everything. Yeah. So I put that in my head. Wait till I get back in. Then bang. But the weird thing is, I have to always play a video game before I paint. So I usually get in, I play a video game, then I'll start a bit of Halo, <laughs> put that down, then start painting. Do you, do you play a lot of video games? Cause I find a lot. when I follow you on social media, mm -hmm. like, I, 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 your life is IKEA breakfast. Not no more. <laughs> why? No, 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 no. Why? When why, they start, why, why are we doing the IKEA breakfast? When they start implementing the horse meat. Into the uh, into the meatballs yeah. without notifying me. Yeah, nah, so, nah. That, that's that's it. No, if you notify me and just tell me there's horse in it. Yeah. Then I'll be like, okay, I know what I'm eating, but you can't just quickly pull it in. Like okay. smart meat with horse. So there's no IKEA breakfast anymore. No IKEA. Do we have a spot that's now the breakfast spot that I need to um, know about? Nah, I don't nah. even know. I'm keeping it simple. Holvis, butter, and then Holvis and the butter, and yeah. that's it. All Toast. Right. So, a scratch off the IKEA breakfast. Mm -hmm. We've got anime. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, obviously the video games. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there anything else that you enjoy? You know, spending your time that kind of helps you get ready to to create to create art. Uh, TV shows, movies. I mm -hmm. watch like three films a day. Three films a day. A day. A day. Every day. Per day. I know every film. Like, there's no film I don't see. Now, every day I watch three films, even if I'm painting while I'm watching the film. Yeah, even if I'm painting while I'm watching, I watch three films a day. What's your favourite film? film? Matrix. Best film ever. Why? Because not to say it's, it's not the greatest film ever. Whatever, so I, wonder what, I don't want to know why the why Matrix is your favourite film. It's so multi-layered. You've got like mm. your biblical undertone to it. Yeah. you got your technology undertone to it, which I love technology. Mm. you got your morals and your ethics. You've got your... Um, racial, so humans versus machines. You've got every um, social platform condensed into one film. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. What more could anyone ask? I don't even like romance, but you've even got romance in it. So. Yeah, there's a lot now. There is a lot. There's of a lot. In the Matrix. Yeah. Um, talk about actors, because Keanu Reeves to me is a bit, uh, a bit robotic. Yes. Perfect a, guy. For that role. For that role. <laughs> for that role. I don't know about any other <laughs> role, but like for that role in particular, is a, is a great actor for that role. But talk about mm -hmm. actors, you know, by the time this episode comes out, I believe it will either be just after, mm -hmm. just before Oscar season or yeah. just after. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Leonardo DiCaprio briefly. If you're a, music, a movie person, mm -hmm. do you rate him as an actor? Yeah. Um, do you think he's going to win an Oscar this year? Have you seen The Revenant yet? Because I haven't seen it yet. I yeah, I have. What's it like? A bear sits on his head and then like the bear <laughs> don't, kicks don't, don't ruin the oh. film for me. Like, <laughs> I was going to ask you what was it like. Is it a good film? Yeah, it's a good film. Yeah. I don't think he'll win. You don't think he'll win? Nah. I you think, wanted to win. I, I think he should win. Then. I think he should win, yeah. but I feel like if someone hasn't won for as long as he hasn't won, yeah. the like the theorist in me thinks maybe they don't want him to win. Ah, uh, okay. Not to sound like DJ Khaled, yeah. but maybe they don't want him to win. They mm. don't want him to have the Oscar. That's what I think. If he doesn't win this one, then that's what I think. Okay, okay. Yeah. Talk about Khaled, though, as a, as a little segue. Mm-hmm. And the power of social media, yep. and I feel the pa what the power of social media for yourself. Mm -hmm. How has social media kind of affected one your life, or the way you do business, or the way your art is spread? Like, well, I follow the teachings of the um, honourable soldier boy, <laughs> who showed everyone how to use social media from MySpace days yeah. before anyone had internet on their phone, before most people even had internet in their home. Mm. Soldier boy was on the internet making millions and. I, not to make it about money, but I feel like that showed me the key is social media. Mm. And that's why um, I took up social media. And that's probably why a lot of other people took up social media, yeah. I reckon. But he, Khaled's use it amazingly. Yeah, Khaled's use of social media right now is yeah. insane. Like I saw some figures, he gets about 
like three and a half million people watching each snap. That's crazy. You know, the reach of that is... Three and a half, is it how many people in Birmingham? More, the, what is more that's like there's two million people in Brom. So He's got he gets more than the whole of Birmingham. Exactly. Watching each one of his snaps. Crazy. Breakfast, chef D. Exactly. Line order. All them Selling things. personality. Yeah, yeah. Not even music, it's just being him. What, what do you think is your most useful tool for, for how you've um, achieved what you've achieved? Has it, has it been Twitter? Has it been Instagram? Instagram. Yeah? Yeah. Is it more so because of a visual, visual, yeah. visual medium? I mean, Twitter, Twitter is visual, but you can put up a picture on Twitter now. Mm. You can go to the toilet. By the time you finish washing your hands, that picture's way down. Yeah, yeah. Like it's fallen, everyone's knocking it down. But yeah. uh, Instagram, slow pace, you go check who you check. You got the explore page, mm. so that's what. Uh, it's more like, a, and especially when you go on your page, it's more like a gallery. Exactly, like it's more for gallery. Of, yeah, you can digest exactly the work that you do, and it also complements the official web page if you have one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All that's right. what I use. Funny, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in. I'm going to ask you. you the final wrap-up question mm -hmm. that I always ask everybody. Um, where do you see yourself in in three to five, three to five years? How, what does Funny Tommy envision for? his career in life? Uh, career wise, I want to be doing exactly what I am now, but mm. to a high level. So I want to, I want it so you know, every, I don't know, summer, there's an exhibition. I want I want to do more uh, event things instead of just painting and then shipping them out. Mm. I want to make events and uh, I want to, been speaking to my managers about this, want to do more community based things. So what we're going to be trying to do is get, uh, more impact within schools and workshops and stuff like that. Yeah. Just to let the kids them know. I see you've done, you've done, you've been into schools. Yeah, yeah. Have you had any feedback about how that's done, how that's affected a, a child's life or, you know, have they gone on to create art because Funny Tommy came in? And yeah, to all of those. And they all say, hey, come back if you can. Mm. So, gonna be doing more of that. All right, bro, continue to do the great work, man. I'll try. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. All right, you've been watching Meet the Artists. I am Desper. I've had Funny Tommy here. We've had a great conversation. Um, catch me next time on BAE3. I'll see you soon. Hey.